screen. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Virtual College Exploration uh, presentation for Beloit College uh, through WACAC. My name is Tej with WAGAC, the Wisconsin Association for College Admissions Counseling. Just here to facilitate the session and then turn it over to our friends at Beloit College. There's a few things to go over. So first, uh, how, how do you ask questions? In the bottom of the screen, you'll see a Q&A box. You can type those there and the presenters will see them. Please note that your camera and microphone are off so the presenters cannot see or hear you. You can sign up for additional sessions. There's more sessions on help through the college search process available at WACAC.com. And the recording for this and all sessions will be available after the fact at WACAC.com. So with that, I'll turn it over to our friends at Beloit. Thank you. Hi, so I'm Cherish Godin. I'm one of the admission counselors at Beloit College. Um, I've been here for two years now, and for Wisconsin specifically, I work with all students except from Eastern Wisconsin, um, as well as a couple of Midwest states. Hi everyone, my name is Emily McEntee. I'm the Associate Director of Admission here at Beloit, uh, and I am excited to work with all the students uh, on the Eastern side of the state. Good afternoon, almost evening. My name is Karen Smith and I am the Midwest Regional Flagship Match Something Manager. I, I have the great joy of working with these two ladies um, to recruit students, work with students, answer all their questions from six states um, in the middle of the country with Wisconsin being that number one state. So we're very excited to have you join us this evening. Great, so we'll get started with our presentation and then towards the end, we'll leave some time for Q&A. Great, so today we are going to be letting you know who we are, where we are, what we do. Um, so we are gonna be talking to you about our fantastic student body, where they're all coming from and what they all do when they get to campus. But one of the things that rings true, no matter what you choose to major or minor in or get involved with, is that when you graduate from Beloit, you will have these four skills. You will be a productive collaborator. You will be intellectually and professionally agile. You'll be a creative problem solver. And you'll also be an effective communicator. These are skills that are gonna help you professionally, no matter where you end up, but also personally too. So we are 1,150 students strong. They come from 43 different states and over 40 different countries. So half of our students actually come from 500 miles away or more. What that means is that you have students who have grown up in wildly different areas, who have completely different backgrounds. Um, they might have different views and perspectives. And you get to constantly learn from each other, uh, not only in the classroom, but also in the residential halls, in your clubs, in your athletics. Um, so you get to take what you're learning in textbooks and really add some life to it with some lived experience um, from your peers. So if you're looking at any other liberal arts college, um, we're all gonna tell you we have small class sizes. Uh, we're also gonna tell you we have warm, tight-knit communities. And that's all true, but I think it's important to let you know what small means for Beloit. So at Beloit, that means that 98% of our classes have 30 students or less. So when you see that average class size of 15 students, um, know the range with that. You might be in a popular intro to psych class that has 25 students, but you might take your next psychology class and have eight students. Um, so it's a place that really does emphasize your participation in the classroom and church. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but we also have a faculty, student to faculty ratio of 10 to 1. And I point that out to show that this is not going to be a place in the college where you have to scrape for attention. It is built in that you are going to have faculty that want to work with you directly. And having that low ratio is really going to help facilitate that. 
one of my favorite parts of campus that you don't find at a lot of schools is that we actually have two different teaching museums on campus. So we have our Logan Museum of Anthropology and we also have our Wright Museum of Art. So between the two spaces, we have over 400,000 pieces um, just on our campus alone. So as you can imagine, our museum study students love it because they get to use these museums to build their resume to get hands-on experience. But these aren't just museums for anthropology students or art students. You could be in a creative writing classroom and the professor says, go to one of the museums, find an inspiration piece, and then do some free writing about it. Um, you could be in a STEM class where you're actually going in and carbon dating um, some of the materials that they have in the museum. Uh, you could be a studio art major who's graduating. And for your capstone, you're actually getting to put up your own gallery exhibit in the Wright Museum of Art. So students use them in all different capacities uh, and we are so happy to have them. So I'm going to spend the next couple of sections talking out about Beloit and our surrounding area and then also academics. So the city of Beloit, where is Beloit? Um, I'm personally a native. I was born and raised here, so I always love to talk about the city. Um, so we're a fairly small, around 37,000. We're right on the Wisconsin-Illinois border, uh, but we are centrally located between three larger cities. So we're an hour, we're 90 minutes uh, north of Chicago, an hour and 15 south of Milwaukee, and then an hour south of Madison. Um, so students are able to get into these larger areas, whether that be for leisure or field placement, in addition to staying in Beloit and doing fun activities. So more about the city of Beloit. Um, again, 37,000. Um, we have a really significant event called Beloit International Film Festival. This event has been in place for almost 20 years. Um, it happens each year around February. Dozens of films are shown at various venues in downtown Beloit. Filmmakers come. So it's really become a staple in the city. Um, also, one thing to note about Beloit College is that it's about a three to five minute walk from downtown Beloit, um, which, which looks very different than it did a couple of years ago. Um, so lots of new restaurants and businesses in the downtown area, so you'll really see the Beloit College students gravitating towards downtown. We're also home to a couple of key companies. Um, we're home to Carry Ingredients, ABC Supply, Fairbanks Morse, Regal Beloit and Beloit Health System. And we have had students have internships at all of these companies and more within the city and the surrounding area. We also have an award-winning farmer's market. We have our beautiful Rock River with our Buccaneer Boathouse. And we have an amazing foodie scene, which is fairly recent and goes back to my point um, of there being a lot of new restaurants in the downtown area. So 174 years of red brick brilliance. What this means is that Beloit College is Wisconsin's oldest continuously operated college. We were founded in 1846, which was actually two years before the state of Wisconsin was founded. We're very proud of our history. Um, if you do have the chance to get to campus, you'll see that the majority of our buildings do have historical preservation. Um, also, Beloit College is located in the historic East District of Beloit. So then jumping to academics and education that works. Um, uh, what I'm going to talk about are majors and minors, experiential learning, and support for our students. All of these are components that really make your experience enjoyable and valuable at Beloit. So some of our most popular majors anthropology, biochemistry, creative writing, economics, education and youth studies, and psychology. So as you can see, there's a pretty good mixture of, uh, of majors that are, made, that are both in the humanities-based fields and STEM fields. Um, so one doesn't take place over the other at Beloit College. Students are exploring a wide variety of different interests. Um, also, one third of our students choose to double major. Um, so with this, they really, uh, they're set up for success. It doesn't throw them off track for graduation. They're still finishing in four years. Um, large components of this are because of the strong advising and the way our degree requirements are set up. Um, double majoring is not required, but the majority of our students do take advantage of this. 
So exploring with a passion, we want students to get experiences outside of the classroom. So there's lots of different avenues to do this, but I just wanna highlight a couple of specific ones. So the first one is the liberal arts and practice requirement. Um, this is a graduation requirement. So no matter what you're majoring or minoring in, you are required to do this. It's really taking what you've learned within your field and applying it outside of the classroom. We also have study abroad opportunities with almost 40% of our students participating in study abroad. Um, if that's something you're interested in, you'll wanna to go to the Office of International Education. Uh, they will work with you. They will really give you individualized tailored assistance to finding a study abroad program that's best for you. Um, I will say that usually where you go depends on your major or minor, um, but we have had students make proposals to go elsewhere that aren't affiliated with their area of study. Um, you can do research with professors. Beloit College is a very research heavy institution. Uh, we hold three symposiums each year. Um, so students do have the opportunity to collaborate with professors. Uh, we did have a former student worker collaborate with a professor on some research and then she was able to present that at a symposium. Um, so just an example of what you can do with that area. Uh, we also have CELEB, which is our Center for Entrepreneurship in Liberal Education at Beloit. So this is the space where you're going to go if you want to get hands-on experience with business ventures. Um, this is a building that's technically off campus as it's in downtown Beloit. Um, there's a couple of different components that students can use within it. Um, there's Gallery ABBA, so for students that are interested in art, they can display and show their art that they've made in Gallery ABBA. We have Maple Tree Studios, so for students that are interested in music and production and mixing, they can get experience there. Um, we have our Beloit Access Television space where students who are interested in filmmaking and media studies um, can get hands-on experience. And then we have our Makers Lab, uh, which is where students can make specific items, usually for business ventures. And last, we have our Career and Community Engagement Center. Um, this is another outlet on campus where students can go if they want to get assistance with um, exploring internships within their field or securing internships or looking into employment after graduation. Uh, we have a nice car share program. They can help with resume writing and mock interviews. Um, so just really a dedicated space for you um, to help set you up for success after Beloit. So then support for our students. Once you get here, we want you to continue to be successful and be healthy um, physically, mentally, emotionally. So we have a couple of departments and programs and resources for you. Uh, we have our Learning Enrichment and Disability Services Office. So this is where students go if they wanna get accommodations set up for housing or the classroom. Um, tutoring is also offered through this department. Uh, we also have our Writing Center. Uh, Beloit is a very writing intensive campus. So if writing isn't a strength, that's not a problem. We have a dedicated writing center where your fellow classmates can assist you with making your papers the best they can be. Um, and then last, as I mentioned previously, we have our Office of International Education. Um, again, their main component is helping students get study abroad set up. Um, they also provide support and resources for our international students. So then moving into student programming. Uh, these specific programs are really geared for our underrepresented students. Um, so students that are from a historically marginalized population. Um, so we have our Student Excellence and Leadership Program, also known as CEL. This is a TRIO program. Um, you do have to be invited to apply after you've deposited and say you're coming to Beloit. Um, and you have to meet certain criteria to be eligible for this. Um, so for, again, being from one or more of those underrepresented groups, which you can find in the bottom right corner. Um, we also have WISCAMP, which is a program for underrepresented students interested in STEM. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And um, we have peer support groups. Uh, we also have a couple of programs um, dedicated to helping students prepare for post-graduation. Um, so the main one is McNair Scholars. This is also a TRIO program. 
and this helps students that really want to go on to graduate school to pursue masters and doctoral degrees. Um, so it is a very research intensive program. Um, so these are just a couple of examples of how you can be supported while you're at Beloit. Um, and for the student programming that will be through the Office of Student Success, Equity and Community. All right, so, you know, Cheris just mentioned the importance of mind, body, spirit. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about in relation to student life is the powerhouse, because if you could actually take that concept and make it into a building, it would be the powerhouse. Um, it is 120,000 square feet of a defunct coal power plant that we renovated um, to make into our new student union and rec center. So it has everything from um, new indoor workout facilities uh, to uh, new swimming and diving, indoor track, a field house. It also has more options to eat on campus with a new cafe. Um, there is an auditorium. There's a lot of rec space and our health and wellness center also moved there too. So this is really a building that you can go to because it is yours as a student and kind of feed all of those parts of yourself. It just opened this past spring and now with students moving back to campus this week, they are clamoring to get back inside. And so this is actually a picture of the outside of the powerhouse. You can see that it's right along the Rock River. So some of the best views in Beloit are from the rooftop there, which eventually will be accessible for students. And if you want to have a lovely river view while studying, that's an option. Um, I did mention the Health and Wellness Center did move to that building. Um, another thing when it comes to what they offer, uh, for any sort of counseling appointments, those are going to be free and unlimited for you as a student. So if that's a service um, and a resource you're used to using, you'll be able to continue that at Beloit. Um, and if it's something that you're going to find yourself needing during your time, you won't have to take on an additional expense uh, because of that, which is really important so that you can maintain your mental health. Um, dining services is wonderful on campus. So we uh, use Bon Appetit and they are really good at working with students about dietary restrictions or allergies. They label everything really well on campus. Uh, there are currently three different places that you're able to eat on campus. So you have a wide variety. Um, and with that, uh, they are really accessible. So even as a prospective student, if you want to email them and say, I, I'm wondering how you would handle me being gluten free and with a nut allergy, they're going to respond to you and let you know how that they're going to work with you when you're on our campus. Um, and they work really closely with our residential life office. So um, we require students live on campus for the first three years. Seniors can move off but most choose to live on campus because at that point, why not? Uh, and we have 32 different living options on campus. So you don't just have to be in a traditional residence hall during your four years. You can be in a suite or an apartment or a townhome or a special interest house, which is housing around a theme. Maybe it's anthropology house, music house, feminist collective. There are many more than I'm gonna take the time to name right here. Um, but it's another way to either dive more deeply into something you're interested in or meet students who also have similar interests to you. Uh, our Student Engagement and Leadership Office is the main hub for clubs and organizations. So they put on some of the bigger events on campus, like big concert weekends, um, like we have Folk and Blues in the fall. Uh, but they also work with clubs, everything from archery club to yoga club to the ultimate frisbee family to the Science Fiction and Fantasy Association. So no matter what you're interested in, you're probably going to find your people here at Beloit. Um, and that also goes for intramural sports as well. So those are offered every semester on campus and they usually do change too. So if you have any ideas for what you'd want to participate in in an intramural, you're able to let them know. Um, sometimes you'll even see some faculty and staff in there too, because we can get pretty competitive about volleyball. Um, you would be surprised. Uh, and then there's campus employment, which is open to all students on campus. Um, that way you can be working on that resume during the semester. But honestly, one of the best parts about campus employment that no one talks about, it's one of the best ways to make friends. 
you're meeting people outside of a classroom setting, maybe not ones that you see in your residence hall every day. Um, so you can make some pizza money or help pay down any tuition costs that you have and meet a new circle of people on campus. All right, and we are also proud to be a Division Three, uh, a Division Three college with 18 different varsity teams. Um, so you'll see them listed here. If you have an interest um, in continuing on with any sports that you've participated in, uh, then you're more than welcome to reach out to any of our coaches. They have the Recruit Me forms on the athletics website, or you can always get in touch with us as admissions counselors. We're happy to make that connection so that you can learn more about what it's like to be on the team. Uh, but a third of our student body are athletes. Um, and then even diving more into that number, two thirds of those students are also two or more sport athletes. If you do better while you're in season and with a schedule, why not continue that on uh, at Beloit? So next we're gonna dive into how Beloit has responded to these COVID times that we're in. And you might be thinking, this might not affect my fall next year. And that could very well be true, but I think it's important to know how we're handling the situation now. Um, because if something was to happen again, you wanna feel confident that the college you're going to is gonna be able to take care of you through that process. Uh, so the first of the five portions that we'll go over are mods, um, or short for modules. So what we've done is we've taken the academic semester and we've broken it up into two mods. So traditionally students would have taken four classes in the fall semester, um, but instead during the first mod or the first half, they'll take two courses and then two courses during the second mod. So you'll still end up completing the same amount of coursework as you would with a traditional semester, but you'll be able to do it in a more focused manner um, and you'll be able to devote more energy toward it. That way with all the other stressors that are going on in life right now, um, academics isn't just another one uh, that's happening, but you can give your time to it and also everything else that life demands right now. Okay, the next is the Advanced Mentoring Program. You'll hear us refer to this as AMP um, because everything in college usually has an acronym, uh, but we also get pretty amped up when we're talking about this. Uh, this is the first advisor that you get at Beloit, and they are so excited to connect with you as faculty members that once you commit to Beloit, you actually get this advisor within 72 hours of committing. So let's say you're a senior, you apply, you're accepted, and you know in March that Beloit is where you want to be. We're going to get you that advisor in March. And you can be developing a relationship with them. They can be getting to know you far before you actually physically step foot on campus. So they're there to help usher you into the community, give you resources that help you register for your first classes. Uh, and they'll stick with you for those first two years uh, to help provide guidance uh, and really serve as an advisor in the larger college campus community. The other part that I like is they're gonna teach you what to look for in an academic advisor. So that way, once you know that biochemistry is what you wanna study, they're gonna help you figure out how to pick your biochemistry advisor versus being assigned to someone that you might not click with or have a lot of the same interests as. So while we're on the topic of advising, um, career channels is something that goes along with this really well. So career channels, I like to think of as kind of 360 degree advising groups. Uh, they work if you have a specific interest or just a general interest. So for example, we have a health and healing channel. So you might know, I want to work within healthcare, but I don't really know where. A career channel is going to be fantastic for you because health and healing is going to show you every class on campus that's going to help someone within health and healing careers. It's going to show you every faculty member who's going to be a great resource for that, every club and organization that students run that you can get involved in, um, and then also get you connected to those off campus, whether it's alum or professional networks. Um, so it really does help you explore these areas that you're interested in, or if you know, I want to be a trauma surgeon and that's exactly what I want to do, it's going to help give you that exposure to that career so that you can either say, yep, knew it, 
Or you can kind of back off and say, not what I expected. What are they doing over there in radiology? So that you, when you graduate, and we'll talk about this again later too, you feel confident in what you're graduating with. Okay. Um, probably the most exciting for you at this moment right now is we were able to introduce our Midwest flagship match. So what this does is it guarantees students from um, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, and Minnesota that our in-state tuition will never exceed the cost of your public flagship institution. So we're in Wisconsin, that would be UW-Madison. So you're never gonna be paying more for Beloit tuition than you would for UW-Madison. Um, this is something that we do a lot through financial aid already, but we just wanna show you that upfront that we are an option. If you want a hyper-personalized and individualized education um, for an affordable cost for you and your family. All right, and last but not least is the Beloit Promise. So this is our promise to our continuing students that this is a community that is run on mutual support and understanding. And we wanna keep students at Beloit who wanna be at Beloit. And so this promise can encompass a lot and probably will continue to encompass a lot in the future. Uh, in the spring, that meant committing to our students that we would not be raising uh, any tuition. So there wouldn't be a tuition increase for this next academic year uh, because we wanted to make sure with everything going on, financials weren't another stressor being put on their plates. Uh, the most recent iteration of the Bullet Promise has been that for students enrolling this year, so whether they're new or continuing, they have the option to pursue a ninth and 10th semester tuition free. So that way, if they want to have that traditional campus experience, if they want to be able to dive into what they've been learning deeper, um, if they want to kind of reclaim what COVID has taken from them during this time, they're able to do that without the additional expense. So it's Cherish again. Um, I'm going to finish off the presentation by talking about next steps. So I'm going to cover the application process, affordability, graduating with confidence, and then our contact information. And then after that, we'll open it up for Q&A. So the application requirements and rounds. We really try to make our application process easy and straightforward for students. So I'm going to go through the requirements and then the rounds so you can know what you need to submit and when you should apply by. So we do require you to apply through either the Beloit College application, which is on our website, or the Common App. If you aren't familiar with the Common App, it's a universal website where you can fill out one application and send it to multiple schools. Um, so Beloit College is on there. We don't have a preference for whichever platform you use, and we don't have an application fee for either site. Um, in addition to this, we'll need your current high school transcript and a secondary school report. So for both of these materials, your high school counselor is going to send this. So whether you're applying through the Beloit app or the Common app, there will be a section for you to put your counselor's name and contact information so they can receive a personalized link to send this information along. Uh, we'll also need one academic letter of recommendation. We usually prefer for this to come from a teacher that taught you in your junior year. Um, you can certainly have more than one, um, but for our application, we only require one. And then last but not least, we are test optional. Um, now I know a lot of institutions have gone test optional um, in the midst of the COVID pandemic, um, but Beloit College has actually been test optional for a couple of years now. So we don't require the ACT or the SAT. Um, if you have scores that you're really proud of, you can feel free to submit them, but we don't place emphasis on test scores when reviewing applications. Uh, we try to take a holistic approach when we review apps, really look at the student as a whole. Um, since we are test optional, we really put an emphasis on your transcript. So we want to see the trends with your GPA. We want to see how you're doing in those core subject areas, English, math, science, social studies, foreign language. We want to see the rigor of the coursework you've taken. Have you done AP? Have you done IB? Have you done dual enrollment with a community college? 
we pay attention to that. Uh, we also look at your writing. So the essay is a really critical component of your application. But we wanna see how your writing strength is as you're entering into college. We wanna see what you're involved in, how you get along with your classmates and teachers. So we really look at all of those um, aspects of you as a student when you apply. As far as our rounds, we have four application rounds right now. Um, so with early decision, which is binding, that deadline is December 1st. So students choose early decision if they know Beloit is the place where they want to go. If this is the round that you'll select, just know that if you are admitted, you do have to withdraw your application from other institutions you might have applied to. Um, now our next rounds, they don't, you don't have to be committed, um, but you do get a decision and a financial aid offer earlier. So that would be our two early action rounds. Um, early action one has a November 1st deadline also, and early action two has a December 1st deadline. With this, you'll receive a decision about a month after you've applied, and then about two weeks after that, a financial aid offer would come. And then our last round is regular decision, which has a January 15th deadline. Decisions for students that have applied under this round will come on a rolling basis um, that is based on when you applied. So a student whose application was submitted on January 1st would receive a decision before a student who might have submitted their app on January 14th. Um, and then again, the financial aid offer for that round comes on a rolling basis also. No matter which round you're applying under, if you are planning to file a FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, um, that's the application you fill out if you want to be considered for need-based aid, so loans, grants, work study. It's better to have this in by the time you submit your application or shortly after. If you are planning to file the FAFSA, it will open on October 1st of this year. So then affordability. Uh, Beloit College was ranked number two in the nation for financial aid, and that was a statistic from LynnU.com. So we're really proud of making Beloit an affordable option for our students and families. We have a wonderful financial aid office that works with students and families very individually, um, just trying to give them the best options possible so they can make Beloit realistic. Um, so our cost of attendance right now is 65,000. While this is a large sticker price, we do have very significant and generous merit aid scholarships. Um, our main merit aid scholarships go up to 36,000 a year currently. Um, this is renewable for up to eight semesters and you keep it um, for as long as you're at Beloit, as long as you have good academic standing. There's nothing additional that you need to submit. These scholarships are awarded based on your application. We do have three additional scholarships that can be up to 5,000 per year. Um, these additional ones require an application or documentation. So there's one if you um, sing or play an instrument, that's a music scholarship. Um, there's a scholarship if you've done study abroad in high school. And then there's one if you're a national merit finalist. So in total, a student can receive up to 41,000 in merit aid by being eligible for one of the main scholarships and one of the additional scholarships if they should apply. We also have campus employment that goes up to 2,000 per year. Um, so as Emily had mentioned earlier, um, a, a lot of students, they work on campus. Um, I think a misconception about campus employment is that it means working in a cafeteria, but our students work in a, you know, a versatile amount of departments on campus. Um, now with this 2000 per year, you could have this applied towards your bill or you could have it come back to you personally. Um, again, the financial aid office would work for, with you on that. So after all of this, our average cost of attendance usually comes out to $19,818 um, for our students. Um, again, it does depend on the individual student household income. Uh, we do have a net price calculator on our website if you ever wanted to get an estimate of what a first year could look like financially. So then you've heard about Beloit. We just want to leave you with some statistics that we received from seniors um, that really put emphasis on the value of a Beloit degree. So 85% of seniors had a mentor that encouraged them to pursue their dreams. Um, so really building those lasting lifelong connections that will 
that will still be um, in place long after they leave Beloit. 94% um, of our students are working six months after graduation, and then 20% of our students are in graduate school six months after graduation. Um, so really the Beloit curriculum sets you up for success and it does prepare you well um, for whether you wanna go into the job force immediately or if you wanna go on to graduate school. So these are just some really cool statistics that we wanted to leave you all with as you think about Beloit College more. And then this is our contact information um, for myself and Emily. Uh, we're the ones that presented today. So if you have any lingering questions afterwards, feel free to reach out to either of us. Uh, we both work with students from the state of Wisconsin. Um, so our email addresses are there, our office numbers and our work cells at the bottom. So feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to connect with you. So we have a little bit of time and we're gonna open it up for Q and A. So I have a couple of questions um, that have been posed in the in the Q&A. And the first question is one of my very favorite, and I think all three of us will respond to this question. And so the question is, how would you describe Beloit College to a friend? Emily? So I always like to deal with like equivalencies. So if I had to make like a grocery store comparison, Beloit College is your Trader Joe's, which I don't know if any of you have that around, but if, if you don't know what it is, it's a little hard to find sometimes, but once you do, it's amazing. It has almost a cult-like following. It's beloved in that way. And it's fun while being high quality, right? So that's a lot right there, but I just mean to say that Beloit, like, is a beautiful place and campus now that Cherish has zoomed out to this photo, but um, it's really a rigorous education, but students have fun during the process. There's not a looming dark cloud because they know how to make the experience a really positive four years. So I'll toss it over to Cherish now. Yeah, um, and per again, Beloit is my hometown. So I personally know eight people that graduated from Beloit. Um, five cousins and then three childhood friends. They all had different experiences. Um, the students at Beloit are very eclectic. They have lots of different interests. They get involved in multiple things um, and they don't have a cookie cutter experience. So, and I think that speaks volumes given the size of our campus, just a little under 1200 students. Um, but just know that if you come to Beloit, your experience is going to be vastly different than a, a friend. Um, and you know, that would be in a positive way. So that would be my answer. Okay, well, I'm gonna answer this question because I actually did go to Beloit College. Um, although it was a long, long time ago, I would tell you this about Beloit. Um, I am the oldest of six kids. I came to Beloit um, six hours away from home. Um, my parents had not visited Beloit. They, the first time they saw it was when they dropped me off. And it is a place that I discovered encourages students and allows students to really explore, push the boundaries of things that they know and things that they think, but in a very, very supportive atmosphere. Um, so you, you kind of feel like, okay, I can stay out after curfew, um, but somebody's gonna be there to open the door for me, right? So it's just really this, I found myself unafraid to ever ask questions of faculty and staff. Um, I had friends from all over the world, which was a new experience for me, having grown up and lived my whole life in the Midwest. Um, and so it was, it was a place that kind of shoved you out there and then took care of you. Um, so that's what I would say about the way. Another question um, that we have is, what if I am an undecided student? I don't really know what it is exactly that I wanna study and, and how would Beloit help me with that? Now, the first thing I wanna say, and I'm gonna turn this over to Emily and Cherish, at Beloit, we try very hard not to refer to students as undecided. Um, in the world of college searching, it's, it has this little bit of a negative tone, right? I think of my own kids, two of them who are undecided and they would say undecided and, and, and people that they said that to would be like, oh, so you don't really know, right? And all of a sudden their voice lowered. 
Um, it, you're not undecided. Most students who are undecided actually are multi-interested. You, you have many interests and you don't know how you're gonna put those together. And coming right out of high school, I think the vast majority of students, whether they're telling the truth or not, are multi-interested and not knowing 100% what it is that they wanna do when they've left college. So Emily and Cherish, if you can talk a little bit about how the late college assists, helps, gets pointed in the right direction, multi-interested students, I think that would be great. Yeah, so I'll start it off. Um, students can remain undecided for up to two years at Beloit. Um, so you certainly don't have to have your mind made up as soon as you step foot on campus. Um, and I talk about this quite a bit. The way our graduation requirements are set up, they really give students the opportunity to explore a wide variety of fields, which is what we want you to be doing. Um, so what this means is that we have specific areas that have to be fulfilled, but not specific classes that have to be taken. Um, so you might have to do a quantitative reasoning course, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a mathematics class. Um, so the main way students are exploring what they might want to major in would be through the domains, um, which are five areas that students have to fulfill for graduation. So systems, arts, text, behavior, and universe. Um, so you will have the opportunity to do that in addition to meeting with your advisor who will continue to work with you um, and provide a very tailored um, guidance on how to move forward. Yeah, and to any student who has to check the box of undeclared or undecided, because I know we put that in front of you on forums, congratulations and keep an open mind because college is gonna offer you disciplines that you've never been able to take. And if you've never been able to take an anthropology class, how, how would you know if you wanna be an anthropology major maybe? So what Cherish is saying you know, with the domains is that we're not gonna put strict gen eds in front of you. So your first two years aren't gonna be all of us here at Beloit saying take two math, two English, two history, two science. You know, instead, play around, explore, take classes within majors right off the bat because it takes the pressure off of, I fulfilled my requirements, now I only have two years left, what do I do? You know, and that is also what helps students to be able to double major because I can assure you, most of those double majors on campus I have met with and most of them didn't know what they wanted to do when they were in my office looking at Beloit. So, Keep in mind, that's what we're here for, and that's what the faculty are here for. They want to help you find your path and carve that. They're not expecting you to have that laid out in front of you. Um, I was also an undecided student, so I love it. Multi-interested. Multi-interested. Multi I always think about what they have to click on a form. <laughs> I know. See, we got to change that narrative there. Um, okay, we're getting close to our time being up, but I have one more question from the audience that I want to ask. Um, a student is asking, should I try to meet with my admission counselor and what might that look like if I do that? Yeah, so that's a big yes. Um, you know, we, we are here really to be a resource for you. And what I mean by that is sometimes you want to know exactly what's happening in Physics 246 because you looked up that class on the website and you're really interested in, um, in the particle accelerator. Awesome. Sometimes that just means I can't find this on a college website because it's really hard to navigate. Can you just help me with this? So I get everything from bullet points to students booking appointments with me. Just know that we're here to get to know you. And I hope that also takes the pressure off of everything that you have to cram into an application if you can talk it through with us. Um, but really, we're here to help make sure that there are no gaps in info. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, as Emily said, I love being a resource for the students I work with. Um, not just talking about Beloit College, but just talking about college in general and getting students to think about aspects that are long term, you know, really paying attention to the city and surrounding area. Um, but yes, I love to meet with students, so feel free to book an appointment. Um, we have started on campus visits again in limited numbers. 
Um, we also offer virtual appointments. So I personally uh, meet with students through Zoom or Google Hangouts um, or Skype, or it could be a phone call or email or text. Um, however you want to communicate with me, I'm happy to connect and just get you all of the information you need. Um, and it's exciting when you've connected with a prospective student and then they end up applying. So you can really put a face um, to a name when you read an application. Right. So the last thing that I'll add to that is we love meeting with students. And I think there's often this sense that we're going to judge you. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be scary. I think you're seeing that the three of us are, are not so scary at all. Um, and what we learn about you often is the color commentary that, that adds to the application that we're going to receive from you. Um, you can choose to include your parents or garden, guardian if that's, that's something that um, is of interest to you. We kind of let you drive that, that boat. Um, car. Um, but it really is an opportunity for us to get to know you better. Answer any questions. If you go to our virtual appointments, you'll see that most of them are scheduled for 60, 45 or 60 minutes. Some of them take 10. Um, so I don't want you, we don't want you to ever think that I have to, you know, make this a long, longer appointment than it needs to be. Um, so I think our, our time is up. Yep, here they come. They're gonna tell us, they're cutting us off. Um, our contact information is on our website. Please feel free to reach out to us if there's anything we, at all we can do to help you. Excellent, thank you all, uh, both for coming to the session and um, Cherish Emily and Karin for hosting it. Um, but just to follow up for the attendees, three quick things. There'll be a quick survey. Uh, please take just a minute to fill it out. It's four questions. You can sign up for additional sessions with more information about how to navigate the college search process at WACAC.com. And this recording and all the other ones will be available also at WACAC.com. So thank you. I hope you all have a great night.